good morning students as exams are going to start from the next monday and we have been doing our revision parts so today we are going to revise the poem damarok so at first let me recite the poem for all of you my desk is at the back of my the class and nobody nobody knows i am a marok from mars with a body of brass and 17 fingers and toes wouldn't they shriek if they knew i have three eyes at the back of my head and my ears here is bright purple my nose is deep blue my teeth are half yellow half red my five arms are silver and spiked with knives on them sharper than spears I could go back right now if I liked and return in a million light years. I could gobble them all for I am 7 foot tall and I am breathing green flames from my ears. Wouldn't they yell if they knew if they guessed a maroc was there? Ha ha they haven't a clue or wouldn't they tremble with fear look look a marog they would all scream and smack the blackboard would fall and the ceiling would crack and the teacher would faint i suppose but i grin to myself sitting right at the back and nobody nobody knows rc scriven so students here the speaker is a maroc so a maroc means an alien who is mainly from mars and he is sitting at the back bench of a class and he is telling that his body was made of brass and he has 17 fingers and toes and this maroc or this alien had three eyes at his back his hair is purple nose is deep blue and half of his of his teeth are yellow and red he had spiked arms which are silver in color and he also had a sharp spear on them he is telling that uh, the students will shout in fear if they got to learn that there is a maroc in their class and he is nearly 7 feet tall and he is breathing green flames from his ears and he is wondering that if the students uh, get to know about his then all of them will be frightened and they would yell and run from here to there and in as all of them will tremble in fear the blackboard will fall and the ceiling will crack then and the teacher will fa- faint according to him but the smarog is smiling quietly at the back bench of the class because nobody knows about that who is he so this is the uh, summary of the poem now let me give you the question answers from the poem once again number 1 is who is the speaker of the poem where is he seated where is he from the answer is the maroc is the speaker of the poem he is seated at the back bench of the classroom he is from the planet mars number 2 find out the rhyme scheme of the poem so here you can see a b a a A B A A B C D C D, then E F E F G G H I H I, then J J K J K. So, okay. <coughs> then the next question is pick out two examples of alliteration from the poem. As a student, alliteration is the use of words that begin with the same sound near one another. Like wild and woolly, so here the alliteration is a Marog Mars body brass. So the another question is, 
which line is repeated in this poem and why do you think the line has been repeated the answer is the line which has been repeated here is and nobody nobody knows the answer is the poet has repeated the line as he wants to clear his idea that nobody knows that a marrow is sitting in that classroom okay so now we will revise an another story that is your next chapter that is chapter number 7 my life on an island so students here the story is about robinson crusoe who once shipwrecked during a violent storm and all his crew members drowned in the storm but he could manage to swim ashore to an island but the island was fully empty there was no one not a single person was there used to live in that time in that island okay and he had no clothes no food and uh, nothing to use but in but only that he had was his laptop because his laptop bag was waterproof proof and due to the wireless wireless network he could update his blog now so that day when he reached the island that day it was raining very heavily so he had to sleep under the shade of a tree but unfortunately means luckily the rain brought his ship to the shore and he could now he could eat something from that ship then he thought of bringing some essential things to the shore that's why he made a raft by tying some long pieces of wood together but he could bring only a few things as the raft was a small one that's why it took a almost a month to carry all the things from the ship to the shore and in that ship he got food paper pen books guns and batteries so after bringing all these things now he thought that he used to now he has to make a house for him because it is not possible to sleep every day under the shade of a tree okay <coughs> so he soon found a cave and now he is thinking of making <coughs> a tent here with the use of ropes and pieces of wood which he will make in front of the cave and then he will use the cave as the back of this tent where he will keep his food now within a few months the tent was ready and it took him a long a uh, many months because uh, he had there a lot of problems like uh, he could usually work only few hours a day because uh, sometimes the sun becomes very harsh in the afternoon and at night also he can't do because there was darkness all around so that's why it took a long <coughs> time to build a tent apart from it he also have to go to in search of food every day and he used to collect fruits and dry them and sometimes kill the wild animal then after making the tent he uh, get, he got the fear of attacking by a wild animal so he made a fence with young trees and ropes <coughs> but he still need many things on which he need to work on then crusoe one day again there was a dreadful storm uh, on the island but he could survive in that um a storm but all the uh, the roof of his cave got broken so after that incident uh, crusoe had learned to make pots to keep food then he also developed a small corn field <coughs> and now he had been in that island for the last 4 years and he had to and he had learned to do many things there one day there he saw a man's footprint and it was horrified because since the last 5 years almost he had not seen the trace of a single man on that island then he saw 30 men sailing to the island they had a prisoner with them the prisoner escaped and crusoe rescued him and that man became his companion on that island and crusoe named him friday as um, he got him on the 
on a friday okay and friday will uh, would be with him for the next 3 years on that island one day friday saw his country from the top of his hill and cruso <coughs> told him that he could go in his canoe but friday was said also because he did not want to leave cruso on that island all alone so then cruso and uh, friday uh, they decided that within the next 2 weeks they will be leaving for their own own countries so this is the story of the uh, chapter now the question answers part number 1 how did robinson crusoe reach the island what were his fears answer is robinson crusoe shipwrecked during a dreadful storm and managed to reach the island by swimming he had fears of food clothes house and attacks of wild animals number 2 why was robinson happy to see his ship the answer is robinson crusoe was happy to see his ship as now he could bring food and some other essential things from the ship to the island number 3 how did robinson build himself a house robinson used the ship's sails ropes and pieces of wood to build his house in front of a cave where he would keep his food number 4 this is the happiest of all my years on the island number 1 who feels this answer is robinson crusoe feels this b why does he feel so answer is he feels so as now robinson crusoe has friday as a friend to talk to Number three. How many years had he been on that island when this happened? The answer is, he had been on this island for six years when this happened. Five. Why did Robinson feel that Friday was a true friend? The answer is, Robinson Crusoe felt that Friday was a true friend as Friday did not want to leave Crusoe alone in that island and wanted, and he wanted Crusoe to accompany him to his own island. <coughs> now student now here comes the uh, turn of grammar so the grammar which ha- uh, we have here is called adverbs so adverbs are the words that give us information about verbs and we have five types of adverbs adverbs of frequency manner place time and degree now out of this five here in this lesson we have one adverb one type of adverb that is adverbs of frequency so students adverb of frequency are the words that shows us how often an action takes place and some of the common adverbs are occasionally hardly ever rarely always never usually frequently often sometimes rarely seldom etc now here we have a composition part that is called diary entry so students diary is a personal book in which one records the their day to day events and the format of diary writing is first you have to men- note down the day date or <coughs> year then you have to write down your diary it is optional also then you have to begin the entries and write about and uh, your feelings whatever you need to write there and at f- last the conclusion part so here is the revision on this chapter and i hope that you have well revised all this chapter that we have revised till today so with it here let me finish my today's class again we shall meet tomorrow where we will discuss the other remaining chapters thank you so much